Cypress Development Corp is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mike Swanson, editor of WallStreetWindow.com. Welcome back to the show, Mike. Oh, it's great to talk with you today. Mike, the U.S. Fed uh, will make their latest decision on interest rates uh, tomorrow. What's your expectation? Well, everybody kind of knows they're going to lower interest rates. It's kind of a given at this point. But what is going to be interesting is to see what uh, is said along with that decision. This will be the third time that the Federal Reserve has lowered interest rates. And as it stands now, the Fed Fund Futures only have a 20% chance of another cut at their next meeting in December. So that means this meeting is going to be the last cut of the year, or at least it's expected to be. And how are they going to announce that? Because... Back in July, uh, when they did the first of these three cuts, uh, if the listener can remember, Jerome Powell said, oh, we only expect to do two or three this year, and everything's fine. These are just kind of precautionary cuts uh, for the middle of a expansionary cycle. He compared it to what the Federal Reserve did in 1998, uh, and I think it was 95 when they lowered once or twice and, uh, then there was no big, you know, recession or anything. They just did it. And, and of course the stock market went up, uh, the, the following uh, year, especially 1999. Uh, but instead of being reassured by that kind of talk, uh, people got very angry. Trump tweeted in, in real outrage. Uh, and, but the stock market fell and sold the news. Gold, uh, fell too uh, on that talk that he gave that type of talk uh, went from about 1450 down to 1400 or so uh, it's hard to remember uh, that uh, now that gold's around 1500 but that that's uh, what happened and but then immediately gold took off uh it went through 1450 but the stock market tumbled into august uh, almost uh, about 7% on the S&P 500. The, the point of all this is that that first cut, uh, the market, stock market sold the news, the gold fell, you know, basically a day, then, then shot up. Of course, the yield curve inverted even more in August. But the markets didn't act in a way that I think the Federal Reserve wanted by, by selling that news when they lowered rates and then Trump getting angry uh, and so forth. And all this supposedly happened because Jerome Powell wasn't promising uh, unlimited cuts or he was being very cautious on the pace of the cuts and so forth. So now we're going to have to make some sort of change from what he's done in the last two meetings in which he's kind of, or the last meeting, I mean, in which he was basically saying, well, you know, we could cut more. And, you know, he's got to have to uh, deal with the fact that they're probably not going to lower again in December, but he needs to do that without tanking the markets again. So that's going to be the challenge at this meeting. Um, and it, I would think, you know, he won't talk the same way he did in July and we'll kind of try to be reassuring and say, well, we'll lower if we have to or, or something to that effect, uh, which, interestingly enough, could be a catalyst uh, for gold to help it uh, break through or this sort of correction consolidation. Uh, it's been in uh, since Labor Day in silver, too. 
uh, if we can get a, a rally, uh, let's say, by the end of this week for gold and silver, I think that would be pretty solid evidence that the lows of, of this, you know, correction or that started in Labor Day are in and people should just really look to buy there. I think that would be the smartest bet to make if people want to look for a trade with this Fed meeting. Is it unusual for gold to be this high with the stock market also near record highs? Well, um, that's an interesting question. Um, and not necessarily. Um, I mean, if you go back to 1987, both were rallying together before the 87 stock market crashed. And in 2007, gold and the stock market had both been rallying uh, basically since, let's say, 2002 and 2003 together uh, for several years. So it's not necessarily unusual. Uh, but, of course, there have been times where gold has gone up and the stock market has declined, too. Uh, and that happened, for example, uh, in 2008, uh, that summer in wintertime. However, I think you are right. In, it is a bit unusual in a certain sense because just about everything uh, has been rallying since I since this year, since this year started, uh, and that is unusual. Uh, so, for example, uh, the U.S. dollar index uh, is up since, you know, year to date from, from January, and gold is up too. Uh, historically, they tend to trade opposite to one another. So that's unusual. And the bond market, the way it's gone up um, in the stock market, uh, has been okay too. You know, interest rates falling, the stock market, uh, being okay. That also is fairly unusual. So I would say what's unusual is that almost everything, uh, has gone up this year. Really the only thing that hasn't is oil and some of the soft commodities, some of the agriculture commodities. Uh, so yeah, it, it is, there are unusual things happening. I would, chalk that up to the fact that we are in un- <laughs> we're in unusual times you know uh Jerome Powell in July well it puts you another way uh here we are the the stock market at highs and the fed has to lower rates uh in panic just because the market dipped a little bit in August uh you know he had to talk really dovish in reaction to that. So I do think we live in unusual times, and uh, it's probably due to the fact that since 2008, interest rates have been at historically low levels, and it, we've even seen negative interest rates in some bond markets for government debt around the world something that had never happened before in all of human history until after 2008. I think that's distorted a lot of the things that are happening in the financial markets and has enabled this environment this year where so many things have gone up in which they historically do not go up together. The the simplest example is gold in the U.S. dollar. We'll have more with Mike Swanson right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company. 
with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Swanson. Mike, Tesla posted uh, unexpected profits. Will this uh, unique automaker survive? I don't think so. I mean, they still, over the past years, or ever since it's existed, every single year, it has simply added more and more debt onto its balance sheet. And this is in the first quarter in which they've said they've had a profit, only to then go back and generate even bigger losses than they ever have before. And the funny thing about this profit is it's also been created with adjusted earnings, which is how they did it uh, the last time. So, you know, it's the thing about Tesla, though, is that it's the heavily most shorted stock in the entire stock market. More shares are shorted Tesla than any other one. In one hand, that's due to the fact that it's such it has such a massive market cap, uh, such a huge valuation, uh, but it's also because so many people, and I'm one of them, believe that this company will end up going uh, bankrupt, but the stock uh, did have a big move this month on that earnings announcement due to the fact so many people short it and then they get squeezed, but it's now around you know $320 a share, and I would suggest that it's probably going to top out uh, at this level, probably might take a month to do it, um, and I don't really think there's much more upside to the stock from here. Really, uh, the kind of stocks I would rather buy are companies that have earnings that are real enough that they're able to boost their dividends. That's evidence that <laughs> if companies are just playing some game. You know, if they can actually pay out more money to their shareholders, that's an exciting uh, company to invest with. Uh, and right now, uh, one place this is starting to happen is in the gold mining co- uh, sector. So, for example, just a week ago, Nico Eagle announced that it was increasing its dividend by 40%. And then Yamina Gold, uh, the next day, said they were going to increase their dividend payout by 100%. Both companies able to do that because gold prices are higher than they were at the start of this year, higher than they were 12 months ago. That's boosting the earnings for these companies. And that's reality. You know, you, you can look at the price of gold and see that it's gone up. And no, well, okay, that's going to increase the earnings for these companies. You can uh, see that when a company pays out its dividends, that's real. But when a company like Tesla, which has done accounting games in the past, uh, that's a simple fact, then says we've done adjusted earnings and have a profit, uh, unless you're a forensic accountant and can really drill down into the balance sheet and, and the earnings reports and really want to do the homework, you really don't know if that's real or not. And we have seen uh, strange things happen with this stock that turn out not to be true. Uh, for example, uh, that moment in which Elon Musk sent out a tweet saying that the company could be bought out and hinted that Saudi Arabia would do it. None of it was true, and he got into trouble uh, for making those tweets, you know, the SEC investigation and, and so forth. So I don't like to invest in companies with management that does things like that. And Tesla, you know, is an extreme example. But there are other companies in which, yeah, the CEOs aren't so infamous, but the companies do accounting games to goose their earnings. Uh, General Electric is one that has done that in the past. IBM is another one that has done that uh, at times. They're not, I wouldn't say, committing fraud or anything like that. 
and I'm not necessarily saying Tesla's doing that, but when companies do adjusted earnings and all these gimmicks, you don't, and if you just go by the press releases, you don't really know what you're really buying into. Now, on one hand, as long as we're in a stock market environment uh, in which the market averages are above their 200-day moving average, uh, and, and, uh, then you can buy stocks that you know are in uptrends, and as long as the feelings investors have about them are positive, even if the ga- games are being played, the stocks can keep going up. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't put Tesla in that category because uh, it's it's really been one of the worst performing uh, stocks in the market over the past 12 months. In in General Electric is also one trading below its 150-day and 200-day moving averages. So I, I try to buy stocks above uh, <clears throat> those two uh, long-term indicators, uh, but. Uh, people, you know, if, if people want to trade something, uh, then really, as long as the technicals and the trend is up, uh, whether what they're buying is going to have real earnings or not, doesn't necessarily matter. But when the trend breaks, then reality matters a lot. And we have seen that in the uh, marijuana sector, the cannabis sector, where companies like Aurora Cannabis are down over a hundred, well, over fifty percent uh, year to date, uh, and are now revealed to you know the dream about stocks like that one that they're going to make all this money from cannabis and marijuana. You know, time goes by and now. You know, we see the reality that they're losing money and not able to execute on what it seemed like. They were going to. It doesn't mean all marijuana stocks are bad, but you know, there's a different, a def, definitely, um, you know, promises made not being executed with some of the larger ones. We'll have more with Mike Swanson right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of a historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the 2019 drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Swanson. Mike, there's talk once again of perhaps breaking up the big tech companies. Do you think that'll ever happen? Well, it's... I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, we've seen this past week uh, Zuckerberg once again testifying in Washington D.C. about um, his Libra thing, and and now there's a letter from Facebook employees that's out there saying that they don't like the way he's going to allow politicians in the United States to advertise. On their platform, they're going to be allowed to basically say anything they want, even if it's not true, whereas other advertisers are, are monitored and ads eliminated if they're full of falsehoods. Uh, so these companies, you know, have a lot of negative publicity around them. And the way Amazon has grown, uh, it, it's really, you know, displacing so many traditional Bricks and mortar companies, uh, Google, the same thing, uh, you know, with uh, internet advertising, huge market share. Uh, will they be broken up? I mean, it's probably not, uh, but they could come under more regulation uh, of some sort or another. Uh, Microsoft faced that uh, about 20 years ago. Uh, so I think it is a risk for people that are in those stocks, but a complete, you know, real breakup, I think, is is very unlikely. However, I think continual bad news 
uh, political attacks on these companies is very likely to continue because it's popular. Uh, polls show that the public, for good or bad, wants these companies regulated and politicians in Washington, D.C., uh, on, in both parties, uh, are expressing that sentiment in Congress and, and in overseas too. In Europe, uh, there's been a little bit more regulation and some aspects of the internet and, uh, and what some of these specific companies can do over there than there is in the United States. Uh, so it's, it's a fluid environment. I think it does, uh, deserve uh, to be put on these stocks as something of a risk premium, but I don't think they deserve to have uh, a breakup risk to them. Mike, how would you sum up what's happening in the market right now? Well, um, this year, you know, the market fell 20% uh, in at the end of the fall, and if you think about it, a year ago, going into that decline, Jerome Powell was trying to normalize interest rates. In fact, that's what he was saying he was going to do uh, by saying we could be raising rates uh, to a higher level uh, and get back up to a more normal environment to get out of the malaise that uh, we have been in since 2008 or to exit it completely. Uh, and that attempt failed. That's why the stock market fell 20%. And he had to abandon uh, such talk and shift to a dovish stance right at the beginning of this year. And the market really rallied uh, because of that and front-run uh, the first interest rate cut. And that happened in July. And now the market is essentially in a sideways pattern again, drifting with low volatility. At the same time, gold uh, sort of broke away from the performance of the stock market back in October 2018 as the stock market began that 20% drop and has has been outperforming the stock market ever since, and so has silver. So I think, you know, it's we all uh, are mesmerized by the day-to-day gyrations in the market, the 48 news cycle, uh, and so forth. But if we step back and just think about the big picture and look at what's happened over the past 12 months, gold, silver, I think are the places to be um, in the action of the past 12 months proves that to me. Uh, and we've had a dip that I think makes for a good entry point, and the stock market is essentially drifting, going sideways late in the cycle, uh, that's why the yield curve inverted. That's why the Federal Reserve had to lower interest rates uh, twice and is going to do it again. But when you're late in the cycle, in time another uh, recession uh, or downturn is the next phase. Um, we're not upon that this week or next month, but that's the real risk uh, in the markets. And when it happens, they'll have to lower rates even more than they may suggest they are planning on doing at this meeting, that will uh, ignite uh, gold and silver even more, and we'll be in a different uh, environment for the stock market, too, uh, because then people will be worrying about how much our earnings going to shrink for these you know, companies that they own shares of, uh, for the most part, and so forth. But right now, perhaps... We could say even the market's drifting and, you know, we can do that uh, into Thanksgiving, maybe into Christmas. Uh, and that would be a, you know, happy time, uh, for people if it can continue, uh, to do that that are invested in the U.S. stock market. But I still think that most people in the United States would be smart to do what many people in Canada and other countries do and have a portion of their money in gold and silver and in the mining stocks, too, at this point. Uh, so that's what I try to advocate uh, people uh, focus on uh, for the rest of this year, move some money out of their traditional U.S. stock market investments and get into these other markets. Mike, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Great to talk with you. 
My guest has been Mike Swanson, editor of WallStreetWindow.com. If you have any questions for Mike or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.